Hey there, folks. How's everybody doing on this July 6, 2019? Hope everybody had a good 4th of July. Still got all your fingers and toes. You got to enjoy your local fireworks there. Uh, enjoyed your day off and remembered, for, you know, for what the day really was, uh, celebrate our freedom. But uh, I'm, uh, if you look coming at me, you're probably on the best one age ride channel and you're wondering who is this guy. So I'm the Carolina wild man coming at you from Eastern North Carolina. Uh, I reside over around the Greenville, North Carolina area. Um, I was just at a West Virginia Motor Vloggers meetup, first annual meetup there, and got to meet some terrific guys. Uh, one, of the, one of those guys would be uh, DVS 1A. Man, I can't can't th say enough about what a great guy he is. Uh, we got to be good friends, or pretty good friends already. We've been chatting, and I uh, hope our friendship just grows. I'm already looking forward to maybe uh, planning a ride next year up to see his uh, hometown and maybe get him to tour me around and of course, you can look at me and say I love to eat, so I hope you got some good eating places, D-Best. But, uh, yeah, so he, he did a great job. He, he uh, on the tour ride, if you guys hadn't seen the videos yet, they'll be coming out. Um, Harley Day Rider, HDR, uh, Bodine 52, and D-Best 1A kind of put this ride on, got it started. I think D-Best, he uh, did a lot of the route planning. I got, uh, unfortunately, I got up. Saturday morning and had an incident back home. I had to come home early. I missed a group, big group ride, but I did. Uh, I did come. Up, I did go up on Thursday, and we got there Friday and enjoyed a good ride on Friday with a smaller group and got to meet a lot of the guys before I left. Um, just all great people. They come from all around. I, you know, Connecticut, uh, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee. Uh, there was people from everywhere up there. I got to meet a local couple, uh, Brian and Donna. Man, I can't say how nice the people they were. They. Um, they toured us around there, West Virginia, and some of the local roads, and just great people. So I uh, look forward to maybe getting up there and riding with them soon. I got their information, and hopefully can get up and do a ride with them, uh, if not by the end of the year, maybe spring of next year. I'm always looking to travel somewhere, and I'm always looking to put uh, restaurant stops in my routes there, and ice cream too. So anyway, uh, D-Best asked me, said, said uh, Caroline Wild Man, if you will make a little video, I'll share it on my on my page here, and maybe some of my viewers might be interested. So, if you guys will come over there, Carolina Wild Man, and check out some videos, I'm, I'm uh, just kind of new and upcoming, but hopefully get some more content up there pretty soon. I'm looking forward to uh, maybe you getting some good subscribers over there. I hope you uh, hit the subscribe button, please. Um, if you've got a channel, I'll come check you out and do the same. So, what I want to talk about, uh, I'm just going to give a quick story about myself. From years back, um, people say, oh, you don't act like you're that wild anymore. Well, I gained a wild, na wild man name way back uh, before even people started calling me wild man recently. I've been, always had a little wild side to me. Calmed down a lot with age. Like I say, I'm 44 years old. But I'm going to take you back to my early 20s. Uh, I think I was 21, 20 or 21. So I've been riding motorcycles all my life. And... Uh, I've always had some sort of ATV, side-by-side, -side, motorcycle ever since I was five years old. My dad put me on a mini bike, and uh, we live out in the country. We had uh, beans, road beans back then. He lined that thing up one of them rows and uh, put me on it. It had the old uh, Briggs and Stratton motor on it, cranked it up, and sent me away down there. And I think I made it about two or 300 feet before I made my first fall. Uh, best I can remember at that age, I, I remember Dad always says, you know, he, I got up crying and didn't want to get back on it, and and he said, no, no, you're gonna get back on this thing, and uh, I, I guess that's when I learned to uh, kick the dust off of me, get back up, and keep going. If any of you guys uh, follow Orvis 128, I think it is. I hope I'm not wrong with that. Orvis Patrick, Mr. Patrick Orvis, uh, 128 there his channel. Um, by now you saw his video where. He took a little spill up there in the twisties, and this is kind of what I want to say. It tied in with my story a little bit, so uh, can't say what a great guy he is. Uh, he's he's a little younger than the rest of us. I think he's 25. I may be wrong, but I think he's 25. Uh, rides an 883 Sportster, and I have got to give him mad props for he came slammed from Connecticut over 700 miles in one day on an 883 Sportster. There's no way I could do it. As you see in the background here, I ride a 2019 Road Glide Ultra. 700 miles on that girl is is a pretty long day as well. 
So uh, props to you on riding that far, buddy. Um, I know you, what I'm getting at is he was beating himself up. He had a little spill on Twisty, uh, come around a curve, a switch back, and uh, uh, I think he panicked a little bit, got on his front brake, and of course the front, front wheel went out from under him a little bit, and uh, he tells a little bit about it in his story, in his video, but uh, so I was just, he was beating himself up real bad. I mean, he, he was he was mad. He was upset. He was embarrassed. And, and that's, I mean, that's life. You know, when, when we do something, uh, people you think people are going to look funny or you about or whatever, you know, we get embarrassed and um, we get mad at ourselves. But you, you got to brush that stuff off. Just uh, take it with a grain of salt, brush the dirt off, get back up. Thankfully, you were okay. That's the biggest part. Um, your bike was okay. Look, you rode it all the way back home. Uh, don't be embarrassed. Uh, stuff like that, I, I take, and I'm proud of. I'm proud of stuff like that because that means that I was trying or going above my limits. You know, trying to learn a little more. And um, unfortunately, sometimes you have to uh, take some bad to learn, but uh, get hurt a little bit. And, and that's in my eyes. But uh, so a little story about an accident I had, 1995. I was currently working at a, a Yale Fort Lift NACO place here, local factory we got. And uh, it was, I was working second shift. It was about 3 a.m. in the morning. I was currently riding or currently owned a 1995 Suzuki RF900 sport bike. And man, that thing was powerful. Uh, 20, 20, 21 years old. And I was just as crazy and no fear. Um, let's just say that thing would really run. Uh, back then I was a wheelie king. Uh, I love to do a lot of wheelies. So we were leaving work at 3 a.m. About five of us that rode bikes into work that day, we were headed to the Waffle House to uh, get breakfast. I had left something in my locker. Uh, told the guys, go ahead, I'll catch up with you. They went on, I went in, ran in, got it out of my locker, come back out. And uh, no riding gear whatsoever. Had on work pants, uh, button up thin, regular work shirt. Had a tank top under it. It was May, hot. So I come out of the parking lot and on the four lane road, I come out from the stoplight on four lane road and it's a, it's a pretty long straight stretch, probably three mile straight stretch. And uh, I took right out of the parking lot doing a wheelie. And when I, when I come down from my wheelie, I was running over a hundred then. Uh, directly in front of me, I was approaching a car in my right lane. So I swerved into the left, not swerved, but I, I went into the left lane at an easy pace. Um, to go around that car and then in front of a little further in the left lane was another car. So as I was you know, running 100, probably 15 or 20 at the time, uh, approaching that car pretty fast, I started easing into the right lane to go around that car. Well, at the time, uh, the car, that car, we all worked together. That car had seen my headlight and seen me coming from behind and he was gonna be nice and get over in the right lane and let me over uh, or let me by. So as that car started coming over into me, um, I literally, I took the bike all the way over to the white line and, and you got to remember now I'm running so fast. So this car came over pretty quick. And at the same time, it, it pushed my knee up into my gas tank. That's how, how hard it came over and pushed me, uh, right to the white line. And I just couldn't hold it on the road anymore. And I, I dropped off the edge of the road into the grass. Well, at 3 AM, the grass was wet dew, and it was just like a sheet of ice. And, uh, I didn't panic. Uh, I, I grew up on dirt bikes. Um, I've had many, many spills. So I did what I, you know, knew to do. I just, I, I released, left all, let off the gas. I gripped the, you know, bars tight. I squeezed my knees into the tank to help keep uh, the bike from, you know, getting all out of whack. And uh, I was gonna try to ride it out. I didn't get on the brakes. I didn't want to go into a slide. Um, but with the with the grass being wet and the dew, uh, it's still the tail end wanted to start sliding around. So as it did, I kind of steered with it. Uh, and came back the other way. And of course, when it started going that way, then I counter steered back the other way. Well, by this time, my, it was, uh, my tail end was about to outrun my front end. So on the last time I knew I was, I knew I was getting ready to go down and, and this is literally happening so fast. Uh, I can remember it like it was yesterday. So as I knew I was getting ready to go down, I immediately, um, grabbed my, grab, grabbed my rear brake, uh, applied front brakes the bike started to go slide down, and as it did, I wanted to get away from it. So I, I, I literally remember kicking myself and throwing it away from me. And um, at that time, I went into a slide, and thankfully it was on the grass. Uh, 
the bike, I mean, I could hear slamming and beating, and, and uh, I just, all I can remember is it felt like I slid for days. But I slid and slid and slid, and I, I had my feet up in the air. I was kind of on my tail end, uh, back portion of my body trying to slide, um, and I couldn't hold my feet up anymore. And when my feet came down and touched the ground, it was like uh, air brakes, and I went to doing a tumble. Um, and at that point, I come to a stop. Well, as soon as I come to a stop, I literally was up on my feet. And uh, I, I was just, you know, my adrenaline was pumping, uh, headlights, everybody was pulling off the road. The bike, you could see the bike, it was scattered and uh, pieces were everywhere. And so everybody comes rushing over to me and, uh, you know, they're real super worried about me. They, you know, everybody's like, I, I can't believe you're not dead. Um, the, the bike was doing flips in the air, almost as, you know, half of light pole height. <clears throat> and so they, you know, they had already called 911. But my adrenaline was pumping so bad, I didn't even realize that I was hurt. And so I get ready to take a step. Um, and about the time I do, I fall to the ground. So I realized that my ankle was broke. Uh, and then uh, you can't see it probably, but here in this area here, I had split my hand up real bad. And uh, you could see the bone and knuckle in there. And I had not road rash, but I had a lot of rash from the grass burn and um, on my elbows, arms, and back. And so anyway, I got an ambulance that took me there and uh, kept me overnight. Uh, had to wake my mom and dad up because I was still living at home uh, at this time and had to wake them up and uh, get them to the hospital and you know, of course they were worried about me. Long story short, uh, three what three months later I was healing up and bought a new bike. I was right back on another bike and uh, uh, sometimes you just got to take the experiences like that to learn from them. So the point of this story is for you, Orvis 128, if you're watching this, is uh, I'm thankful you were okay. Um, I know you got a little learning experience from that. We're glad to uh, see that the bike was, you know, fixable and you were able to ride it back. And there's no need to be embarrassed. Uh, if you ride a motorcycle, this is my, I've always had people tell me this growing up and, and I definitely go by it now. But if you ride a motorcycle for any length of time, there's one or two things. There's people that's either gone down or you're gonna go down. Uh, and you're, if you haven't dropped a bike, you're going to drop a bike. Uh, like I said, this is my 2019 Road Glide Ultra. I bought it in December on my birthday of 2018. It's currently uh, July 6, 2019. I've got 10,500 miles on it. What did I do last week? Messing around here on uh, trying to practice my U-turns. Um, I consider myself a pretty good rider, but it happens. I, let, I, I didn't drop it hard, but I walked it over. I lost my, I got too slow and uh, had, to, had to put it on the crash bar there. Didn't mess up anything. What little little scratch on the crash bar, I buffed it right out. So, But it's gonna happen. So if you ride long enough, be ready for it. And don't get embarrassed, it, it's, it is what it is. So I don't wanna make this video too long. Uh, I just wanna thank dbest one a for getting me out there. And uh, you guys come over. Uh, to my channel, subscribe, and uh, I'm going to do a few more videos of some of my stories I've got uh, in the next uh, couple months here. I've got a lot of footage that I hadn't done from the trip yet. and um, So anyway, thank you, D-Best 1A, and it's the Carolina Wild Man. We'll catch you next time.